Let us take a look of the data set that we will use in the bioinformatics research. So the data set includes the following things. It starts with the primary sequence information. It then includes what is the secondary structure information and finally includes the tertiary structure information. And the data set obviously it try to include all uh, important information regarding to the proteins. Of course, how do we collect those information is going to be pretty interesting. So starting with the tertiary structure information, we want to talk about that because there is what we call a PDB protein data bank. It is the place that holds all known 3D structure information, which is considered like the ultimate database that stores all protein related information. So that is where we want to start with. And therefore, in order to understand how do we collect the information, we need to look into a PDB file. So in your folder or in your uh, blackboard, I have attached those two files. You can see that the one that end with that PDB is the file that stores the PDB information. I try to open it through the Notepad++, which can give us a better information of, about looking uh, the structure of looking the PDB file. So if we go from the beginning, it will talk about some basic information about the PDB file. And more importantly, you need to understand, you can see that this PDB file is uh, named as 1AVW. For every known protein, they will have a four letter words to describe it. And each letter can contain uh, numbers or the uh, alphabetical numbers. So it's basically an alpha uh, numerical data type. So for everyone, it will give an ID and with the PDB file indicating that is the PDB file to talk about this protein. So you can see that in the beginning, it has the header information, it has the compound, it has the source, where does the file comes from, and then start talking about the proteins. And of course, a lot of these information are useful uh, to biologists, especially those remarks, but probably less interesting for us. So if we uh, keep scrolling down until the location uh, of here. So if you take a look of this one, this is where it talks about what is this protein's amino acid sequence. So it gives you the each amino acid sequence uh, in the primary sequence for the protein uh, to look into what is it composed of. And then more in interesting to us is their tertiary structure information. So you can see that when it comes to line 507, is start looking into every single amino acid. So you can see that this is amino acid number one. It tells you that this ILE is the amino acid that we are looking at. So for the very first amino acid, it will have composed of several atoms. The most interesting one is what we call a C alpha carbon. So that if you recall, for each amino acid, it has the center location of its C alpha carbon. And then this PDB, not only this out the C alpha carbon, but also this out all of the uh, other atoms location. And then you will move into, since we focus on C alpha carbon, let's take a look of this row. And then you will look into its 3D structure location. So this is a X, Y, and Z 3D space of the C alpha carbon. And by looking into that one, you will be able to find out, okay, this atom is located in here, goes to the next amino acid, which is going to be VAL, and the C alpha carbon is over here. And with these pictures, you will be able to really draw uh, the three-dimensional structure graph to talk about or to represent the whole protein. And I, this is pretty interesting uh, in terms of the 3D structure information. So that is what a major uh, useful part for the uh, for PDB file to be used in our bioinformatics research. And that's also where we can get uh, the protein 
the primary sequence composition as well as what is their three-dimensional structure information. So if we come back to the slide, that's what the PDB uh, file looks like. Then when we uh, try to look into the whole known space, of course, PDB contains a lot of files over there. Um, at this moment, it's, probably, it's already more than 10,000 uh, known structures it's possible to collect all the information. However, we still want to use a more systematic way to gather the uh, proteins that we are interested in. That's when the PISIS comes in. The PISIS is a public server for cooling set of protein sequence from the PDB by sequence identity and structure quality criteria. So what does that mean? That means that in the whole protein data bank, there's all proteins that are known structures. But some of them are coming from the same family. Some of them probably uh, have five families in there. Uh, once you uncover one three-dimensional structure, it's going to be easier uh, for you to identify other proteins in the same family uh, to identify their three-dimensional structure. So sometimes some of them are overlapping with each other. So what PISI is trying to do is that you will be able to specify a percentage, for example, 25%, which is the one that we are using, saying that find all representative protein uh, that are less than 25% similarity. So if they are similar, uh, to each other, then they will be grouped it together and then just use a representative one uh, to show uh, that protein as the representative of the family. And in this case, we use the Pisces so that we selected out 2,710 proteins uh, that are selected. And these 2,710 proteins are used to represent uh, the whole known proteins with 3D structures. And none of them uh, are share more than 25% similarity. So they are all very different from each other, representing each family. In other words, if we are going to take a look at a PDB file, since we select 2,710 PDB files, and then I have 2,710 PDB files. And I, of course, I do have that. Uh, I just don't necessarily want to show all of you uh, to you guys. But that's how uh, we select the interesting targets that we are interested in. Then we can start collecting uh, for every single one of those representative ones. We are trying to collect their primary sequence information. So now you can see that since I use a threshold cut 25% similarity, indicating that none of them are sure more than 25% similarity, then I am using each protein in 2710 to represent one family. So the family information is represented in another file called HSSP file. So in that file is also the other one that I have included over here. Uh, and I'm also op try to open that in the uh, Notepad++. So in this file, it will try to do what we call a sequence alignment with all of the known proteins that are in the same family. So let's take a look of what does that mean. What that trying to do is this. So in the uh, beginning of the HSSP file, what it will do is that uh, it will list out all the sequences. So you can see that starting for this protein, it has the uh, sequence number over here, PDB number, so that uh, in each protein data bank, what is the location? So the first amino acid is I. Remember that there is a three-letter representation, and I is a one-letter representation, so they are talking about the same uh, amino acid. The next position is V, which is VAL, and the next one is G and G, etc. So that for each location, it try to do the sequence alignments with all known family members. 
So you can see that each color, some of them are missing because they have been mapped uh, uh, aligned in the later locations, but each column is representing one protein doing the alignment with that. So you can see that this protein basically aligned with another 70, with another 70 proteins. And you can see that uh, for the first location, they try to do alignment uh, with each other so that it will uh, be able to align with I uh, of the locations. And the next, next uh, um, amino acid is aligned uh, with some of them are I, some of most of them are V locations. So they will try to align with each other and then generate a summary report. And you can see there's a lot of information over there. So it generates a summary, summary report to talk about what is the result of the alignment. So you can see that this is where we looked into uh, the data and collect the information out from here. So we're starting with the first location, the first amino acid location. And here is representing 20 amino acids. If you count one by one, you will see there are 20 amino acids. And then they try to represent what is the percentage for each amino acid going to occur in that location. And therefore you can see that for the first location, I has 74%, V has 24%, L has 2%, M has 1% uh, to be represented in this very first location. So this is how we can use this protein to present the whole family. And this is like the summary uh, of the uh, amino acid uh, protein sequence alignment results. And therefore, what you can understand, for example, like on the four, for the fourth location, uh, G is actually the amino acid going to occur for 99%. Uh, for the third location, 84% is actually G. And of course, the sum of the 20 amino acids occurrence probability equals to 100, which is 100%. So this is how we are be able to use uh, the protein to represent the whole family uh, in terms of the primary sequence information. Finally, each protein, we pick up a window size of nine uh, to go through the whole structure so that we basically have nine locations to be considered as one segment. Of course, this window size can be modified. Uh, it just uh, throughout the whole research team that we were working on, we choose window size equals to nine. And therefore, uh, the first starting from first location until the ninth location, we consider that as our one data point. So this data point has 9 multiplied 20, because I have 20 amino acids and window size is 9, so that we end up with 180 dimensions to represent one data. The second data, of course, is starting from the location 2 to 10, and it will contain 180 dimensions in their primary sequence. Uh, the next data would be 3 to 11, again, 120, uh, 180 uh, attributes to represent the information. So if we come back to the slide, now we will be able to get our primary sequence from HSSP file. Uh, we, there is another file using the same uh, protein name and then DSSP to talk about what is the secondary structure of, uh, for every single location in that protein. So we also be able to collect the secondary structure information from the DSSP file. So finally, what we have get is that we get there for every single one protein. We have window size of nine. So in the primary sequence for the first part of the data will contain 180 dimensions to talk about the frequencies of each amino acid to occur in that uh, segment. Then, because window size is nine, so there are nine locations. There are nine locations to talk about what is their secondary structures. Finally, we also go into the PDB file and then try to retrieve uh, the three-dimensional space information as the 3D structure information. So the, for one data set, it has sequence information, secondary structure information, and tertiary structure information. So that it represents the data set uh, of how we are using in this uh, research.
So out of 200, uh, 2,710 proteins, each one will go through the HSSP file, collect a window size of 9 for every single one of that, collect the DSSP file for the signal structure information, as well as collect the three-dimensional sp uh, space information. Then this data set generates more than half a million of the data sets uh, that, come, that is representing the data that I used uh, for this bioinformatics research.